we begin today's virtual exploration near Froome in Somerset and then head up to Lansdowne near Bath. Then we'll head across to Trowbridge and Melksham and we'll finish today's journey at Marlborough in Wiltshire. Mr James Greeks of Phones Grove operated a flying field just north of Froome. It appears to have been open throughout the 1930s, but not used after the war. I haven't found any record of any notable flights having taken place at the site, and it's now disappeared under the Froome Bypass. Mr Kelson of Chapel Farm, Lansdowne, operated a flying site throughout the 1930s. Notably, Sir Alan Cobham operated joyrides in his DH-61 Giant Moth from the site in May 1929. And likewise, in May 1931, DC Barnard brought the Duchess of Bedford's Fokker 7 into the site for joyrides. Today the site is playing fields, although it looks quite usable if a chap needed to. Mr Pike of Hilperton, Trowbridge, ran a landing ground throughout the 1930s. Much like the landing ground at Froome, I haven't been able to find any flights of note having taken place. The site is now used by the Trowbridge Rugby Club. Mr Hunt of Outmarsh Farm ran a landing ground near Melksham throughout the 1930s. It was a decent sized field, being some 700 yards long, 300 yards wide, and also had a railway halt at one end. The field was used by Sir Alan Cobham's National Aviation Day tour on the 22nd of May 1933. Today the railway and halt have long since closed, and the site is bisected by the A350 main road. However, all is not lost. Look at the top left corner of the field and you might spot an airstrip. In 2018, the Wiltshire Air Ambulance Trust moved onto Outmarsh Farm and built a 300 metre landing strip for the helicopter operations. The landing ground at High Trees, Marlborough, was built by the Earl of Cardigan, who kept an Avro 504N in a hangar on the adjoining farm. RAF training aircraft from nearby RAF Upavon used the field for landing practice. The field was also used by Reginald Ward and the Honourable Andrew Dalrymple. Ward and Dalrymple were both former de Havilland apprentices who had formed the Chilton Aircraft Company. Their aircraft design, the Chilton DW1, had astonishing performance on low horsepower, but only four were built before the outbreak of the Second World War. By 1939, the Earl of Cardigan had sold his Avro 504N, so all four Chilterns were stored in the Avro hangar for the duration of the Second World War. High Trees Aerodrome continued to be used throughout the Second World War by the RAF and by US forces who were stationed nearby. 
at the end of the Second World War, the Chilton Company started gearing up to produce aircraft again, including gliders. Dalrymple and Ward tried to obtain a German Feisler Storch aircraft for use as a glider tug and for low-speed aerodynamic research, but were turned down by the Air Ministry. However, one of the Chiltern draftsmen, an ex-RF pilot called Dennis Phillips, was given permission to enter occupied Germany under the pretext of studying aircraft manufacturing techniques. He wasted little time in finding a suitable Feisler Storch as an aircraft dump, bribed a US Army officer so he could take it, carried out minor repairs, painted on RF roundels, and flew it back to England without any trouble at all. He and the aircraft arrived in Hungerford on Christmas Eve 1945. On Christmas Day 1945, Phillips and Dalrymple took off in the Feisler Storch. After their third takeoff, the starboard wing was seen to break and fold back against the fuselage, and the aircraft crashed, killing them both. The Chilton Company never built another aircraft, and High Trees Aerodrome closed. It has now reverted to farmland. Thank you for watching.